Hey again, this is David with the Shepherd School, and today what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to make vinegar at home without having to buy a, uh, a mother. Okay, so basically what we've got is some uh, vintage 2010 um, homemade wine, a uh, nice, uh, nice vintage. I think the grape variety was store-bought frozen grape juice. Um, really high quality stuff and um, got a couple of mason jars uh, there might be a little dust on the bottle but uh, you know don't mind I don't have what's inside you know so anyway I got some of that got a jar to ferment it in right you don't want to use anything that's reactive so no uh, copper or, or aluminum uh, pans this is just a glass jar that some wine came in and then I've got some vinegar um, apple cider vinegar really in truth you want to use the kind of vinegar that you're trying to get what I mean is typically if you're gonna make red wine vinegar like we're gonna do you want to use a red wine vinegar as a starter that way you don't have any off flavors but it really doesn't matter if you're not gonna be snobbish about it because the uh, actobacter the live uh, organism that converts the alcohol into vinegar, the acetic acid, is the same. It's just whatever the base is, it's got a little bit of flavoring. I happen to have some of this organic apple cider vinegar, and I got it because it is unpasteurized and raw, meaning that they have not killed the, uh, the bacteria. So all we're going to do is just put some of this wine in this jug, dilute it down a little bit with some uh, distilled water because we don't want chlorine from tap water to, to kill the organism, and put just a little bit in here. Now, we don't have to dilute it, but that would make it awful strong, but we are going to dilute it just a little bit, and we're not going to fill it all the way up. We want um, some air space. So basically how it works is you have a bunch of sugar in water. You add yeast, the yeast eats the sugar, and as a byproduct, basically pees out alcohol, okay? And it does that in, a, in an anaerobic environment. You want, you know, you want no oxygen in it because you don't want any other bacteria or whatever to form, okay? And so when all that, the sugar's gone, you have alcoholic beverage. In this case, some uh, nice vintage um, homemade hooch. Okay, then what happens is the Actobacter, which is, you know, basically a bacteria, kind of like a yeast, whatever, um, eats the alcohol and pees out acetic acid, which is the scientific term for uh, vinegar. And, and I know that's kind of simplified, and we'll put some more, you know, scientific type terminology on the, uh, on the blog so people don't accuse me of being too rednecky. But, you know, basically all you need is some sort of unpasteurized raw vinegar. Now, I'm going to pour it in this glass container because I don't, I, what I want is the sediment at the bottom. And I pour it back in. But I want the dark stuff. There's some stringy little things. that contain more of the organism. I want the sediment out of the bottom. And I'll pour that back in there. See that little growing thing? That's what I'm trying to get. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, which is typically why they filter it to get it out, and then they pasteurize it to kill it so no more grows, okay? That little chewy, uh, uh, chewy gooey thing is uh, what's going to make our vinegar. Okay. Woo. Oh. 
Oh, that's good stuff. That's nice and nice and strong, nice and uh, it still had a little bit of yeast in there, you can see at the bottom. And then we'll just add a little bit of water. And we're just going to sit this out in uh, room temperature relatively dark place that uh, can get some air to breathe. Take this piece of cheesecloth, put it over the top like that because what we don't want is any uh, other bacteria to get in there. I'm going to find me a rubber band here in a second. I put a rubber band around it because you know we don't want any molds or any other types of yeasts to get in and to mess up what we're doing. You know, all that stuff is clean and, and sterilized, you know, in the dishwasher uh, before we did this to make sure that the only living organisms that we're putting in our wine is the living organisms that we want in our wine. So, come back in about two months, uh, maybe three, and we should have a nice strong vinegar. What a lot of folks do is they'll get some sort of um, crop pot or, or ceramic vessel that's got a little spigot down here and as they use some you know get about halfway whatever they'll just throw whatever leftover wine that they've got in there and kind of keep it uh, constantly um, growing so they constantly get more and more vinegar but we're probably just going to to let use this all in one one batch so if you make a lot of wine and remember I've said before you make about 200 gallons a year per household or 100 gallons per person a year in, in America legally for your own personal use and if you don't drink that much which which I don't I just like making it um, can't sell it that gets you in trouble but uh, you know making vinegar is a great thing to do um, an extra hobby to have that uh, is a whole lot more useful than just the raw alcohol so anyway until next time you can always catch us online at www.tngun.com